We've got uh, a double header over in Chicago. The Cubs beat Montreal six to four in the first game, and Montreal won the second game from the Cubs eleven to two. In that first game, Madlock and Mundy hit two home runs apiece, and Foot hit one for Montreal. The winner in the first game was Hooten, and the loser was Rinko. Each had to have Brady. In the second game for Montreal, Davis homered with two on in the third, and Middlewall hit one for the Cubs in the sixth inning with nobody on. Carruthers, the winning pitcher, relieved by Murray in the sixth inning. Burris took the loss. Hudson, Todd, and LaRoche uh, relieved him. The other games in the National League are all night, and they start later on. It'll be New York at Philadelphia. Pittsburgh is at St. Louis. Houston at Cincinnati. Atlanta at Los Angeles. And San Francisco at the San Diego. Now the Tigers and the Birds here in Baltimore tonight on a cool, clear evening. That's it for now. Ernie Harwell saying see you at game time. Tiger Beat with Ernie Harwell has been brought to you by Household Finance, the company that has something no one else has, a bright new world. Look for it at Household Finance. And by Etna Smelting and Refining Company, the people who want to buy your junk. Radio 76, this is WJR Detroit, America's great radio station, a service of Capital Cities Communications. Bet you didn't know you could do department store shopping anytime. That's right, anytime, day or night. All you need is a Montgomery Ward catalog and your telephone. It's called Ward's Catalog Fingertip Shopping. Now what could be more convenient? A complete department store right in your own home on a 24-hour basis. No more worries about weather, babysitters, parking. Just select the items you want, phone in your order, and arrange delivery. That's what Ward's catalog fingertip shopping convenience means. If you've already received your Ward's Christmas catalog, be sure to look through it carefully. There are great gift-solving ideas for every need. Not a Ward's catalog shopper? Then stop in at your neighborhood Ward's Catalog store and register for the next available free Ward's Catalog. You deserve the best. Ward's Catalog, over 102 years of experience in satisfying customers. Detroit Tiger Baseball. Welcome to Tiger Baseball. Today's game is brought to you by the Stroh Brewery Company, Detroit, Michigan. Stroh's from one beer lover to another by Marathon Oil Company and its Marathon dealers who won't rest while America needs energy. By the Independent Insurance Agents of Michigan, the local businessman in your town who displays the big I symbol. By the 22 members of the Metro Buick Dealers Association and by Buick Division, nothing beats a Buick. By City National Bank, where $250 in savings gets you absolutely free checking. By B.F. Goodrich and their radial tire specialists, in Dearborn, see Bob Phillips' BFG store at 15150 Michigan Avenue, and in Madison Heights, see Rick Wagner, BFG, 28501 DeQuinder. And by Dairy Queen, where lots of good things to eat are waiting for you. Now here's Ernie Harwell and Paul Carey. everybody along with Paul Carey this is Ernie Harwell Memorial Stadium Baltimore Maryland and the scene of the Tiger action tonight is clear and cool tonight and the Tigers opening up a two game set for the Orioles who find themselves right in the thick of the pennant race and all the eyes of the sports world tonight focused on Al Kaline to see whether Al can come up with hit number 3000 in his fabulous career. Dave McNally, the veteran left-hander, will be on the mound for Baltimore. The Tigers will counter with their young right-hander, Vern Rue. And we'll be back in one minute with our starting lineup. B.F. Goodrich, na, 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 na. B.F. Goodrich introduces the Golden Lifesaver, the Fixer, the first and only radial tire with advanced steel-belted radial construction plus puncture protection that really works. It's the first radial tire with a special liner system that actually repairs punctures up to a quarter of an inch in diameter. That's why it's called the Fixer. The Golden Lifesaver is totally unique both inside and out. It's totally distinctive, too, with the new block tread design and attractive double stripes. 
Naturally, the fixer carries a written 40,000-mile treadwear guarantee. If in normal driving you do not get 40,000 miles of treadwear from the fixer, just take it to your nearby B.F. Goodrich retailer. While everybody's talking about radial tires, only your nearby B.F. Goodrich retailer has the fixer, the most unique and most advanced radial tire offered today. In St. Clair Shores, see Wally Berry or Jerry Nowicki at the Banner Tire Company, 23418 Harper. And in Ypsilanti, see Chuck or Tom Silkworth at Silkworth Tire, 6 East Michigan. Well, he's all warmed up and ready to go. Here's Paul Carey. I think you're talking about Dave McNally, our journey. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It's a clear but cool night here at Baltimore's Memorial Stadium for the opener of this short two-game stay for the Tigers that will wind up the last road trip of the season. But it's a big night in Baltimore. A big story here. In fact, two big stories. The biggest, perhaps, Al Kaline's quest to hit number 3,000. And the other story, Baltimore's pennant push. As they enter the ball game just one game back of the Yankees, who at this point, after six innings, are trailing the Boston Red Sox 4 to nothing in the opener of their twilight doubleheader. Well, the umpires are meeting down at home plate right now. Let's check those starting lineups. We've got, uh, again, uh, a couple of pitchers going with varying degrees of experience here tonight. The veteran Dave McNally, the left-hander, going against the Tigers while pitching for the Tigers will be right-hander Vern Rule. For the Tigers against McNally, uh, leading off, playing in center field, will be Ron LaFleur. Batting second at second base, Gary Sutherland. Hitting third, the Tigers' designated hitter, Al Kaline. Batting fourth at second at doing the catching, Bill Freehand. Hitting fifth at first base will be Reggie Sanders. Batting sixth in right field, Leon Roberts. Hitting seventh, left fielder, Dan Meyer. Batting eighth at third base, Aurelio Rodriguez. And batting ninth, shortstop, Ed Brinkman. For the Orioles against McNally, leading off and playing in right field will be Rich Coggins. Batting second, center fielder Paul Blair. Hitting third at second base, Bob Gritch. Batting fourth, the DH for Baltimore, Tommy Davis. Hitting in the fifth spot at first base, Boog Powell. Batting sixth in left field will be Don Baylor. Hitting seventh at third base, Frank Robinson. A batting eighth doing the catching, Elrod Hendricks. And batting ninth, the shortstop for Baltimore, Mark Belanger. Vern Rule with one victory and no defeats. His victory achieved in his first start in the majors last Thursday in Boston. And right now, we'd like to have you join us for our national anthem. McNally, winner of 16 with 10 defeats on his record, going into his final warm-up tosses, and we'll pause for this message. Let me tell you about the kind of police that always makes me happy. Where the 
the sun don't hide it. The air is clean, it's easy feeling free. Me and my girl down by the singing river. Mm, country life, country love, country me. Grass ain't no fields of gold. You can almost see them grow. Sunday picnics with our friends. Someone sure to bring the strolls. You can't top a good thing. for the Straw Brewery Company, Detroit, Michigan, from one beer lover to another. Just about ready to go, Dave McNally, who's won four in a row, with 16 victories to his credit against rookie Vern Rule, with one victory to his credit in his last outing, his first start as a major leaguer. So quite a trial for Vern Rule to try to stop the Orioles who are one game out of first place in the American League East. Ron LaFleur stepping in. Here for the play-by-play -play is Ernie Harwell. Thank you, Paul. Here we go now. The left-hander delivers. It's a strike call. He got that first one over. Now Baltimore getting excited about this pennant race, and they know that the Boston Red Sox have a lead over the Yankees in the first game of their doubleheader. Here's the wind-up by McNally. The pitch to LaFleur, and he takes a slow curve. It floats in high. One and one, the count on Ron. In 50 games, batting 235. He'll be followed by Sutherland, and then it'll be Kaline. First shot at 3,000. Here's the pitch. He swings the bounding ball at the short. Belanger has it. Here's the throw to Boog Powell. He's out. It's the close play. And before Sutherland bats, let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Marshall Wells checks the town and country report mornings at 5 on Radio 76 WJR Detroit America's great radio station. Here's Sutherland hitting at a 251 clip against McNally and McNally kicks and deals. It's a strike call. Larry McCoy, the plate umpire, up with that big right hand call. K-Line waits at the on-deck circle. No score first inning we've just started in Baltimore. This will be the first of two games. There's a line drive. It's the second baseman, Gritch, for out number two. So now we'll probably see quite an ovation for Al K-Line, the Baltimore boy, playing his last game probably in this stadium. Here's a standing ovation for K-Line as he's announced by Rex Barney on the PA. in baseball waiting for that hit number 3,000. K-Line stepping in. Batting average 261. McNally looks him over. Here's the windup by McNally in the pitch. He takes the ball. Oh, fastball. Two out, nobody on first inning. K-Line with 13 home runs, 62 RBIs. The pitch is swung on and missed, and the count is one and one on the Tiger veteran. The outfield is around the left and deep. The infield is back. Base is empty. Two men down first inning. K-Line waits on a 1-1 pitch. He takes the fastball wide to make it a 2-1 count on Al. Bill Freehan is on deck. Robinson uh, deepens now at third base a little bit. Kyle McNally checks his sign with uh, Ellie Hendricks, his catcher. It's a 2-1 pitch to K-Line coming up for McNally. And here it is. He swings the bounding ball to short. Belanger has it. Throw to first to Powell. And they side out 1-2-3 in the Detroit first inning. At the end of a half inning, Detroit nothing. Baltimore coming to bat. Once in a generation, there's an entertainment package so bold and exciting it beggars description. Such as WJR's fall program lineup. You'll hear exciting personalities like these. 
Hi, this is J.P. McCarthy, and our fall 1974 morning musical is frankly going to sound a lot like last year's with you, Dave Dials, Miss Wonderful, Priscilla Pennyfeather, Lyle Brochet, Fat Bob, Super Jock, M.E.P., Benny the Bookie, the Bird Lady, the Dog Lady, the Monroe Tarzan, and every now and then even some music. J.P. McCarthy's Big Fall, 6.30 to 10 a.m. daily. Hello there, this is Jimmy Lance, and I'd like to tell you about my Big Fall in the afternoons. Even though we're launching an all-new season, I'll continue to direct traffic for you, play your favorite records, give you a business quickie, a sports break, and chuckle along with you on what's new in the news. Well, that's how much we plan every day, but the rest is all spontaneous fun. My Big Fall is 310 to 6 p.m. daily. Have a fall with me. you folks back in Detroit that uh, Al Kaline will be honored uh, on uh, Sunday if he's attained his goal of 3,000 hits on or before Saturday. The observance uh, for Al will be held on Sunday, this coming Sunday, September the 29th. And if he gets his 3,000 hit on one of the remaining days of the season, the Tigers will salute him on the day following the historic hit. But a lot of big uh, plans and uh, appropriate ceremonies are set for that day on Sunday to honor Al Kaline. There will be a commemorative gift from Tiger owner John Fetzer. And for you fans, there will be a colorful two-foot by three-foot souvenir poster marking uh, Kaline's admission to the 3,000 hit club. Uh, we know that uh, you want to be out there to pay tribute to Al. And if he gets the hit on or before Saturday, that's a big event. That, uh, Number two. Big celebration for Al will be this coming Sunday. We'll make your plans to be out there with us. Vern Rule, the young man from Coleman, Michigan, now ready to go to work. And Rich Coggins will lead off. Coggins, the left-handed batting outfielder, stepping in. And he takes a fastball outside, ball one. Coggins' batting average is 242. He has three home runs and 28 RBIs. Great speech during the leadoff spot, and he takes a cut and misses. It's a 1-1 count. Vern Rule, in his first glimpse at this ballpark, I said, you've never been here before. He said, that's true in every major league park I go to. There's a drive to right center, base hit. Coggins is on with a single, the ball fielded by LaFleur, and rifled back into Sutherland. Well, Rich Coggins has a leadoff single, and Paul Blair, another one who can uh, run pretty well, stepped up. Blair batting 259 with 17 home runs and 58 RBIs. Oh, getting to the veteran stage now. He's 30 years old and has been around the pro ranks since 1962. Tigers one out, one, two, three in their uh, first inning against Dave McNally. Now Rule, the young right-hander, takes his set position and delivers. Here's a line drive, base hit to center field. Going to second is Coggins, he'll hold there. The floor fires the ball into Brinkman, who cuts it off at shortstop. So the birds are flapping their wings early here in Memorial Stadium. They've had lead off single by Coggins and a single by Blair. And they've set the table for Bobby Gritch, who comes up now with two men on and nobody else. And the freehand going out quickly to settle down his right-hander, Burn rule. Bobby Gritch batting 264. Uh, Gritch has 79 RBIs. Tommy Davis has uh, 78. He trails uh, Bobby by one in the club leadership. Gritch has 18 home runs. And uh, Blair trails him by one with 17. Well, here's the right hand batting Gritch. We've got no score. The birds have two men on and nobody down. And the Tiger infield not looking for the bot this early in the ball game. Tommy Davis, designated batter, is uh, waiting on deck. Here's a set by Burn Rule and the young right hander of the Miz. Here's a ball low. He started the bunt and uh, took it. And it's Rule the ball. Man on second is Coggins. The man on first is Blair. Both are fine runners. Coggins a little faster than Blair because uh, Blair has suffered a broken ankle in his career. Uh, Coggins uh, edging off, so is Blair. Is the set by rule, a rather quick worker. 
He holds it at the belt. He delivers. Here's a high pop up down the right field line. It may be a fair ball. I think it will be. Nope, it's a foul and picked off by Sanders in foul territory. The runners hold on. The ball started out fair, drifted over back of first base in foul territory about a couple of feet. Well, that will bring up the always dangerous Tommy Davis. National League batting champion a couple of times when he played for the Dodgers. 11 home runs and 78 RBIs for Tommy. At a batting average of 281. Davis. 35 years old now, Tommy. We walked into the clubhouse and had a chat with Tommy while he was soaking those muscles of Sears in the whirlpool. And he says it's exciting to be in the pennant race again. Now, Tommy is stepping up. The Tigers would like to get that ground ball for a double play right here. Because Davis is not much of a runner. Two men on, one man down. No score. First inning. Rule. The young right-hander sets and pitches. Here's a curve in for a strike. Well, the Boston Yankee first game is still Red Sox four. Yankees nothing there in the eighth inning. They've got two to play there, and the Orioles and the Tigers have one to play here. Outfield is straight away. They bunch up the middle on Tommy Davis. Rule pitches. It's a curve low and outside. He just missed the outside corner. It's cool tonight in Baltimore, but it's uh, clear weather. And we've got a pretty good turnout. They're trying to make the million mark here. They're just below it right now. They'll have to average uh, over 20,000 for their all their remaining games. I think they have five left to make the one million mark in paid attendance. Here's the set now, the 1-1 one -one pitch. Curveball fouled away. They had the runners moving, and uh, Davis, who is an excellent man with a hit and run, fouled it back of the dirt. One ball and two strikes. Paul, I don't know whether you heard the radio today, but the uh, radio announcers, disc jockeys, et cetera, were really beating the drums to get a crowd out here tonight. Well, the papers were full of Al's pursuit of hit number 3,000, tracing his career back to his early days here in Baltimore. In the afternoon paper, the uh, News American, had uh, two full pages. The first two sports pages were completely devoted to K-Line. And they had a picture of Al in 1951 with his first trophy when he was the most valuable player in the Hearst uh, Sandlot game in New York. Now Davis waiting on a 1-2 pitch from Burn Rue with two on and one out, no score. The runner from second to third goes. There's a throw. He is out. And uh, Coggins is out. Blair holds it first. The pitch to Davis is in close, and it is a 2-2 count on him. Imagine Mr. Coggins is going on his own there, or maybe there was a busted signal somewhere, one way or the other. One or the other, yep. Anyway, he's out at third, and he was out by a fairly wide margin. So there are two out and one on, and that eases things a little bit for Rule and the Tigers. Tommy Davis with a 2-2 count on him. Rule sets, holds it at the belt, and the is. And there's a foul in the dirt. Back to the screen. And the count stays on Tommy at 2-2. Well, Ralph Houck has certainly uh, not uh, held Vern back from pressure games. He was in there against Boston up in Fenway Park and in here in the opener of this series. Well, that's the way to do. Start them out and let's see what they can do. Here's a foul fly out of play. It'll be off the facing of the mezzanine and then down below. Keep our eye field on that uh, Yankee doubleheader. We don't have anything later. Boston is batting in the eighth inning now. They lead the Yanks. Four nothing. Tion against May. Tidrow will leave May in the sixth inning. That's the first of two. They've been announcing the score here in Memorial Stadium uh, ever since they began to get reports long before this game started. And you can imagine the joyous reaction from the Oriole fans when they heard that score. Now the 2-2 pitch again to Tommy Davis. Rule delivers. Here's a bounding ball wide of third. Off the glove of Rodriguez. Picked up by Brinkman. Throw to first. It won't be in time. Davis is safe at first. Safe at second is Blair. The ball hit to the left of Rodriguez. He went over, got his glove on it, and we'll wait for the scoring decision. The scoreboard has flashed 
nothing so far. Luke Powell will be the batter. That is a single. Record that as a single. I'd have to disagree with the scorer. Looks like a fairly routine play from uh, this booth. Well, here's Boog stepping in. Our pregame guest who has uh, perked up his hitting here in the late stages. Batting 267, 11 home runs and 43 RBIs. Outfield is very deep at around a right. Here's a curve, a tie for a ball on Powell. Sutherland is very deep at second base. More respect for Boone's power than his speed. Santos is uh, deep at first and uh, wide of the back. Not too much of a breeze tonight here in Baltimore, but it's very cool. There's a strike. He got a slider across, one and one. Boston did not score in the eighth inning. The Yankees are batting in the eighth of New York in that first game. Boston leads 4 nothing over the Yankees. Second, Tommy Davis at first. Boog Powell waits on a 1 1 pitch from Rule. Here it is. Bounding ball to first. Love by Sanders. He makes the play unassisted in the side retires. Good play by Reggie. And that retires the ball of Orioles. No runs on three hits. Now, there were no errors and two runners to left. At the end of one, Baltimore nothing, Detroit nothing. Your marathon dealer does more than just sell you gas. He's your good neighbor for service to your car and driving needs. He's also a good neighbor to the community he serves. Here are some community service tips that your marathon dealer would like you to know about. The Village of Clinton's Fall Festival begins Friday, September 27th in an atmosphere of old-time craftsmen with old-fashioned ice cream parlors, a blacksmith, road rallies, and plenty of artwork. The ladies' auxiliary of the VFW Post 345 will be having a Tupperware party on Wednesday, September 25th at the Don Sherman Post at 25245 West 7 Mile in Redford Township. And if you're a high school dropout, the Detroit Urban League's John C. Dancy Street Academy can help you. Call 869-7771 for more information. These community service reminders are a service from your neighborhood marathon dealer. And Marathon says, here's to our dealers. Bless them all. Oh, young Vern Rule got out of deep trouble in the first inning. The Orioles picked up three base hits but did not score as uh, Bill Freehand caught Rich Coggins attempting to steal third on what appeared to be either a missed sign or the fact that Rich just decided to go on his own because there was no move at first by Paul Blair. And that was the big help as Reggie Sanders made a fine play to get the third out in the first inning. Inning number two for the Tigers. Ernie? Well, Bill Freehan uh, will uh, lead it off. The Tigers went down one, two, three against McNally in the first inning. That included a bounce out by Al Kaline in the quest for his 3,000th hit. So here's Freehand to lead off, and McNally gives him a slow one that's very high and outside. Freehand has come on strong in the last uh, couple of weeks. He's batting 283 now with 15 homers and 49 RBIs. No score second inning in Baltimore. And the pitch. He takes a ball low, checking his swing. 2 and 0. Fred Brocklander, umpire from the Pacific Coast League, dropped by to say hello, and he says, we got greetings from Tim Hosley, Paul, who played out there, and Ike Blesser, <laughs> former Tigers. Here's the 2-0 delivery. Swing and a fly ball at the center field. Blair should have no trouble with this one. He comes in and makes the catch for the out. Oh, McNally has stepped down the first four. And the batter will be Reggie Sanders. The first baseman. Number 43. You've got a permanent greeting from Tim Hosley, haven't you, Ernie? Not kidding. That's not on my head. <laughs> <laughs> He's the guy that hit me with a foul ball when I was in spring training. Santa's batting 269. And McNally delivers. Here's a bounding ball foul down past third base. Hit very sharply, but just foul. That was hit so hard it might even have been past Brooks Robinson. 
Reggie hit that ball like he was hitting them in Milwaukee the other day with those four RBIs on Sunday. Uh, McNally ready to go to work on him again. No score second inning. Tigers at bat with one out. It's a curve. It stays outside. McNally has a good assortment of pitches. And uh, Jim Russo, the uh, Baltimore scout, used to say when McNally first came around, he had the best curveball he ever saw. And he's still got a very fine one and a good mixture. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. It's a fastball this time. It sneaks over one and two. That's the count on Sanders. On their last trip, the Orioles won five out of six. They had swept the uh, New York series, and then they won two out of three in Boston. Here's the windup in the pitch. It's a ball outside, 2-2. Two -two. Earl Weaver was uh, talking with uh, Paul and me before the game, and he said he thought what really turned it around was getting Palmer back in the pitching rotation. Now the 2-2 two -two delivery to Reggie. It's a strike. Oh, he struck him out. Fastball. Makes it a call. Third strike. McNally's first strikeout. Now here's Leon Roberts. Another youngster brought up by the Tigers from Evansville. Batting 308 in 10 games. Roberts uh, still looking for his first major league home run. Five runs batted in. Game scoreless. We're in the second of the Tigers at bat. Uh, McNally working carefully in this big game for the bird. It's a strike called. He got a curve across. Since the 29th of August, Baltimore has won 20 out of 26. That's how they've come on. Also had a 10-game winning streak in that span. There's a curve that stays outside on Roberts 1-1. One and one. Tigers have eight games to play after this game is over. And the Orioles have seven left after this one. Here's a pitch. He looks at the ball low. Two and one. McNally not missing the strike zone very much on those last two pitches. Here's the windup now by Dave and the two one delivery. It's a ball low, the fastball three and one. McNally was saying that his control was great against the Yankees the last time out. He beat him. Beat him step nothing. And he was saying that that was the best control he's had all season. Here's the three one pitch. Swing fly ball right to the field. Blair and Coggins and verging on it. Blair is there. He's deep. Makes the catch. And the Tigers for the second straight inning go down one, two, three. At the end of one and a half, Detroit nothing, Baltimore nothing. Hello, Martha Jean, the Queen. Hi there, City National, the bank. What are you doing here? Well, gee, Martha Jean, I like to drop in on the Queen every now and then because you do all your banking with me and, gosh, Rooney, you say good stuff about me all the time. <laughs> I sure do. Say, do you know about my new free checking? Oh, yeah, it's the best free checking offer in Detroit. <laughs> right. Tell the folks about it, City National. Well, if they'll open a savings account with me for just $250, I'll give them free checking, the kind where they can write all the checks they want absolutely free. You know, I've been telling my friends how they can lose their hard-earned money by paying bills with checks and money orders that cost them money to write. That's right. They'll never get rich throwing their money away. You know, it's just wonderful, City National, and there's no service charge with you every month either. <laughs> Jinkies, no. You know, the money they put in a savings account will earn interest, too. Highest the law allows. Well, I sure I'm glad you took the time to remind my good friends about your new free check in City National. Tell your friends to drop by, Martha Jean. Golly, Ned, anybody who's a friend of the Queen's is a friend of mine. I bet you. <laughs> Member FDIC. Well, here come the Oreos to bat now. We've got a scoreless deadlock in the last half of the second. Young uh, Vern Rule pitching against the team right in the pennant race. We'd like to salute uh, Mr. Claude Edwards of Newberry tonight on his birthday. Happy birthday to him, a longtime Tiger fan. And we want to say thanks for his uh, loyalty over the years. Rule is not quite ready to pitch. And uh, Baylor is about ready to step in the batter's box now. So we'll get this thing underway in a minute. No score, second inning. Birds at bat. 
Baylor batting 266, big strong right hand batter, takes a strike up in the middle. Had a visit from uh, John Tork of uh, Detroit. He's working here with Bethlehem Steel. He says he's still a Tiger rooter. As a fly ball to the right, it's made twice foul. It's deep. It is a foul ball in the seat. And a gentleman from Dundalk caught it on the fly. Rule uh, gave up three singles in the opening inning, but the Orioles did not score. Here's a fly looping into short right center. LaFleur drifts over. He's there, makes the catch, running to the right field side, and uh, Baylor is out on the fly to center. Here's Brooks Robinson coming to bat. Nice round of applause to the Bird fans for Brooks. Batting 294. I had a nice chat with Jim Northrup, the ex-Tiger, before the game. Said, how do you like it? He says, well, I like it so far, but I really haven't been here much. I've been on the road practically since I left Detroit. Here's a ball high on Brooks, ball one. Jim's looking good, and uh, he's uh, happy to be right in the thick of things. Here's a cut and a miss by Brooks. The ball popped out of the middle of freehand. One and one. Brooks has 54 runs batted in and seven home runs. It's a ball high, two and one. Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Evan uh, Falkenhagen, formerly from Oscoda, Michigan, now living in Maryland. They're at the game tonight. See if Kaline can get number 3,000. Bounding ball, deep third, backing up Rodriguez, has it, long throw to Sanders, and Robinson is out. That's two down in the Baltimore second. The game is scoreless. And after eight innings in New York, it is Boston four, the Yankees nothing. The first of two. And that uh, game that's down in Texas, a doubleheader that's been transferred from Chicago down there been delayed because of rain so they're having all kind of problems with that game now well, here's the left hand batting catcher Ellie Hendrick outfield to right on Ellie and he takes a slow curve in close from Vern Rule ball one Hendrick's batting 216 for the year there's a fastball in tight again apparently the Tiger system is to work him inside No runs, three hits for the Birds. No runs, no hits for the Tigers. See, the team's made a bubble. Here's a curve that hangs high, three at all. Kind of curve you don't want to throw. Up in the eyes, and uh, it was a little bit too high for Hendricks to go for. Outfield deep to the right. Rodriguez is uh, very wide at third, and even with the bag. Now, Rule uh, looks him over, rocks into action. Here's the pitch. It's a strike on the inside corner between the belt and the knees. Rule versus McNally in this game tonight. Here's the 3-1 delivery. Hendricks hits a high pop-up back of second. Eddie Brinkman is under it now, waiting, and he makes the catch for the out. Oh, the birds go down one, two, three in their second. And at the end of two, it is uh, Baltimore, nothing, Detroit, nothing. Is love keeping you home? Do you think love cannot be found outside your own backyard? Well, fellow beer lovers, our kind of love is all around. Stroh's beer is just too good to keep it all in Detroit. You can pack your family up and take them on a swell vacation to Kentucky and still get all the Stroh's beer you want. You can finally see Tennessee without losing sight of Stroh's. The fact of the matter is, you can go north, east, west, and south through 10 states with a fresh Stroh's beer at your side. Look, friends, 
We appreciate your loyalty, but this is a big country, and we'd like you to see as much of it as you want. So get out there and see how the other beer lovers live. With Stroh's, you've got a lot in common. From one beer lover to another, Stroh's beer. From one beer lover to another, Stroh's beer. The Stroh Brewery Company, Detroit, Michigan. Station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Carl Haas is your expert guide in the world of music weekdays at 210 on Radio 76 WJR Detroit, America's great radio station. Dan Meyer is stepping in now to face McNally, left-hander against left-hander. Meyer hitting uh, 357. That's five hits and 14 trips in his uh, short major league career, and McNally curves him low and outside. Dave has set down the first six batters that he's faced. Not lost the game since August 28th when Texas beat him. Swing and a miss. A good cut on a high fastball, one and one. McNally has 13 complete games this year, and uh, he's picked up four shutouts. He's one and one against the Tigers. Here's a tap a hit slowly down the first base side and roll foul. Now he comes over to pick it up. This left-hander McNally is the number one winner in the history of the Baltimore Ball Club. He started with them 12 years ago. He's won 181 games for them. And also 33 shutouts over that uh, career. Now the left-hander ready to go. Kicks and delivers. And there's a fly ball at the right field. Coggins is going back. Reaches up and makes the catch for the out. Ball hit pretty well by Meyer. But uh, Coggins took care of him. And the batter now will be Rodriguez. And McNally has set down seven straight. Number four. Radio batting 224 in 150 games. He's played the most games on the Tiger team. And I think you could probably guess in second. He's on deck right now, Eddie Brinkman. It's a check swing, rule the ball by umpire McCoy, and uh, he's checked out by Joe Brinkman, the umpire at first base, who agrees with him. The Orioles don't agree with him, but Joe Brinkman agrees with him. No score. We're in the third inning. The Tigers have batted with one out and nobody on. It's a strike. He got a breaking pitch over, one and one the count. got three hits in the first inning and did not score. There's a tap a hit on a high hop to Belanger. He waits for it at short. Fires over to Boog Powell in time. It almost hopped too high for Mark, but he jumped up and gloved it and fired the Boog in time. Well, the first eight Tigers have now gone down in succession. And here's Eddie Brinkman coming to bat. Ed's a little lighter tonight. He shaved his mustache. Batting 212, 13 home runs and 49 RBIs. Right-hander against the left-hander McNally. It's a curve in close. Ball one. Waiting on deck, Ron LaFleur. Well, Mr. McNally has been perfect so far. Here's the wind-up by Dave. He pitches. Brinkman fouls it on the screen right down below us. One and one, the count on Ed. The Tigers have had uh, tough sledding against Baltimore this year. They've won four and lost nine against them. At home, they've won only one and lost five against Baltimore. It's a half swing, and it is ruled a strike. Umpire McCoy had to check with umpire Joe Brinkman, and Joe said, yep, but the other Brinkman went across. One and two. Ed 
Eddie Brinkman shaking his head. Here's the one two pitch to Ed with two out and nobody on the game scoreless in the third. McNally delivers. There's a high foul upstairs. Tigers hit two balls to shortstop in the first inning. Everything else has been hit in the air except uh, Sanders. Uh, he struck out on the call third strike. Rick, but waiting, here it comes. Tap ball in the dirt over toward the seat. Well, we've got a lot of extra newspaper, radio, TV people with us because of the Al Kaline's quest for that 3,000 hit. And they've kept Al quite busy. Here's the pitch. He takes the ball low. 2-2 two -two the count on Eddie Brinkman. Here's the windup by McNally in the 2-2 two -two delivery. Here's a curve that missed the inside corner. Three and two the count on Ed. on a full count delivery. Here it comes. He swings and taps the ball on the ground down past third base coach Joe Choke. Oh, Ed steps back and he doesn't choke that bad very much these days. Right down at the end of it. Here's the full count delivery. It's a ball. He walked in. There is the first Tiger runner. Brinkman gets a two-out walk in the third inning. Oh, now McNally has fanned one and walked one. The Tigers do not have a hit yet. Here's Ron Lafleur, who bounced to a shortstop his first trip. Tigers and the Birds meet again here tomorrow night. We'll be on there at 7.15. That'll be the final road game of the year for the Tigers. And they'll be back home for seven at home to close it out. Throw to first. Brinkman back easily. Outfield straight up on LaFleur. LaFleur hits the right quite a bit. Especially with that outside pitch. There's a high one outside. He takes this one. Ball one. Sutherman waits on deck, and then K-Line is the next schedule batter. Throw to first, and Brinkman is safe. It was close. Eddie really didn't have much of a lead. He just didn't get back very quickly. latest we have from uh, the Yankees they are in the eighth inning at the end of eight and four nothing Boston in that first game now the pitch LaFleur takes a high one ball two two and oh the count on run big game tonight in the National League Pittsburgh at St. Louis you see step now by McNally in the 2-0 delivery. It's a wide one, very wide of all three. Hendricks wants to go out and uh, settle down McNally. That Pittsburgh at St. Louis game will not start for a while. It starts at 8.30. About 21 minutes from right now. And the probable is Keeson against Curtis. As of the moment, the Cardinals have a half-game lead over the Pirates. Now we have a later report from New York. The Red Sox did not score in the ninth inning. The Yankees are batting in the ninth. Boston leads by a score of four to nothing over New York. That's the first of a doubleheader at Chase Stadium. Now it's a 3-0 pitch coming up to uh, Ron LaFleur. And he takes a strike. 
Fast ball through the letters. And Chicago at Texas. The transferred game and the regular game postponed because of rain. That'll jam up the schedule. Here's the 3-1 delivery. Ron swings and fouls it away. Full count on the floor. That pitch a little bit toward the outside, but I think it was in the strike zone. Anyway, you can't take them too close. McNally goes to the set position, 3-2 count. And the pitch. Swung on this, a fly ball right to the field. Blair racing over. He won't get this one. It bounced past him. Coggins has it on a hop. Rounding third is Brink, but he's headed home. Here's a relay to the plate. Not in time. The Tigers score. Brinkman coming home on the double by LaFleur, and it is one to nothing Detroit in the third inning. A right set of field double by Ron LaFleur. That skipped past Blair, was fielded by Coggins. Good thing he was able to cut it off because the run could just have kept on running. So that'll bring up Sutherland now with a run in. Tigers lead it one to nothing, two out. That is the first hit of the game for Detroit. Sutherland hit the ball hard his first trip, but it line drive to his counterpart at second base, Bobby Grish. One nothing. Tigers ahead. Swing. There's a line shot. Hit the grit again for the second time in the game and the third out of the inning. One run on one hit. No errors and one man left. And we go to the last half. The third. Detroit one. The Baltimore nothing. Let's see what's happening at your Metro Buick dealer. Hi there. Anything on sale today? Well, you might say all our Opal models are very reasonably priced for year-end clearance. Hey, well, this Opal Manta Luxus is really loaded. Or you might say it's well-equipped. How much extra will it cost me for these corduroy reclining bucket seats? They're standard. And how about the rack and pinion steering and that clock? Standard. And how about the vinyl-covered steering wheel? And, hey, that's a four-speed manual transmission. They're all standard on the Opal Manta Luxus, along with several other features, such as front disc brakes and front and rear stabilizer bars. <laughs> you might say that the Opal sets the standard for standard equipment. If you're in the market for a fully equipped compact car, check out the Opals at your Metro Buick dealer. Like the man said, right now they're reasonably priced for year-end clearance. Nothing beats a Buick. See Bill Gregg, Bill Gregg Buick in Royal Oak, Chuck Grissom, P.L. Grissom and Son Buick in Dearborn, Kelly Minnick, Kelly Minnick Incorporated in Utica, and Warren Mitchell, Mitchell Buick in Mount Clemens. Vern Rule now has a one nothing lead to work with as he faces the birds in the third inning. Kaline's mother and dad are out here, seated uh, right down in front of uh, Jim Campbell, Lee McPhail, and uh, Doc Finkel of the Tigers. And seated alongside uh, Miss Kaline is Sheriff Powell, who was the Sandlot coach of Kaline here in Baltimore when Al was growing up. Here's Belanger coming to bat now against Vern Rue. Mark Belanger, the shortstop that eat it off of the Orioles. Tigers ahead one to nothing on a double by Ron LaFleur that got the run in. Here's a ball in too close on Belanger. Ball one. Belanger batting 221 with five home runs and 34 RBI. He takes a high one, 2 and 0, the count on Mark. Clear skies, cool weather in uh, Crab Town tonight. There's a strike, a fastball served over by Rule. Rodriguez is even with the bag, and uh, we're fairly close to the line there at third base. Everybody else is back. It's a 2-1 pitch, swing and a foul upstairs, out of play. 2-2 two -two on Belanger. Coggins, Blair, and uh, Davis all picked up singles in the opening inning, but Coggins was out on the steal attempt, and that cut down the chance of any rally by the Birds, and they did not score in that first inning. Swing, bounding ball to Brinkman's left. He has it. Here's the throw to Sanders. Got him by four steps. One up and one down. Top of 
the batting order now for Baltimore. Rich Coggins uh, stepping in. Coggins, who hit the 319 uh, last year, started very, very slowly and never really came out of it, but he's uh, come on toward the end of the season here pretty well. Here's the pitch. It's a ball outside, ball one. Detroit one, Baltimore nothing. We're in the last half of third. Rule delivers. There's a strike. He caught the inside corner one and one. Coggins stands a little uh, forward in the batter's box and fairly near the plate. Left hand about it, better than knees. He chokes his stick a lot and takes a curve that bends in too close on him, two and one. Tigers lead it one to nothing, third inning, birds at bat. And leading off in the fourth will be Al Kaline. Here's the pitch. Swing and a bounding ball it to Sutherland. Nice easy hop. Throw to first. He got him. And there are two up and two down in the Baltimore third. Well, the batter will be Paul Blair stepping in next. Paul had a single his only trip. Well, unless the Yankees uh, kick up a little bit there in the ninth inning against Teon, we might be getting a final soon from Shea Stadium. Boston had a 4-0 lead over the Yanks going into the ninth inning of that first game. Now Rule uh, checks his sign with a Bill Freehand. And the Blair takes a breaking pitch outside ball one. Outfield plays him straight away, the infield back, except for Rodriguez. There's a fastball very wide to Paul. 2-0 oh, the count. Don't forget now, the Tigers have seven home games remaining, and they've got a big celebration schedule this coming Sunday for Al Kaline. Three posters for everybody. There's a bonding ball to third, off the glove of Rodriguez, bounding down the left field corner. Chased down now by Meyer. He has trouble picking it up as it bounds away from him, and it'll be a double for Blair. Two for two for Blair, and now the always dangerous Bobby Gritch ready to step up. That ball uh, played Rodriguez. He uh, might have had a shot at it, but he uh, didn't play the hop correctly, and it skidded past him as he tried to backhand the ball. Hit fairly hard and a tough play, but uh, we've seen him uh, make that play quite often. So here's Bobby Gritch. with a fair-sized lead at second base and uh, Rule working with a one-nothing lead now. Sets and holds it. Pitches. There's a ball low. Low and away. Ball one. Bill Freehand doing the catching tonight. In the outfield, the Tigers have Meyer in left floor, floor instead of Robertson right. And the infielders, Rodriguez at third, Brinkman at short, Sutherland at second, and Santos at first. Burn Rule on the mound. And the pitch is wide a curve. Two and oh. Rule has a change-up that he'll use once in a while. He's not used it so far tonight. This is the first of a two-game series. And tomorrow night, the Grimsley against Lolich. Couple of left-handers. Now, Rule is ready. It's a 2-0 pitch. And Gritch hits a slow roller. Wide of the bag at first. Here comes Sutherland over. Grabs the throw to Sanders. He got him on a good play by Gary Sutherland, who had pulled over towards second and had to come a long way to get that ball to his left. So it's no run on the one hit. No errors. And the one man left. And at the end of three, it's the Detroit Tigers won the Baltimore Orioles nothing. Maybe you've heard that beginning July 1, Government regulations require most service stations to sell unleaded gasoline, since many 1975 cars will have an anti-pollution muffler that can be harmed by leaded gas. Since all this is new to most people, Marathon wants you to know what they've done so you don't have to worry and wonder what the whole thing's about. First, Marathon has planned for lead-free gasoline by changing certain refining processes and building new storage facilities. 
They've also installed many extra tanks at service stations with special smaller nozzles on every pump with Marathon lead-free fuel. Marathon also thought it was important that their dealers really understand this new product. So they brought dealers in for special training programs on new Marathon lead-free. Here's dealer Bob Shook from Mattoon, Illinois. One thing you're going to like is most Marathon dealers won't have to drop one grade of gas. We'll have three grades now, premium, regular, and lead-free. If you've got any questions, come on in. We'll be glad to answer them, even if you don't need gas. Well, here's another ovation for Al Kaline, the Tigers' designated hitter, going for that uh, 3,000 hit. And to describe the action for us, here's Paul Carey. Thank you, Ernie. Al bounced out to Belanger at short, his first time up. The pitch is swung on. There's a drive down to right field into the corner. It'll be in for a big set. Maybe extra bases. Al is digging for second. He's in with a stand-up double. A two-base set for Al Kaline. Hit number 3,000 in his fabulous career of 22 years as a member of the Tigers. Listen to this standing ovation. presentation will be made to the 12th man in the history of Major League Baseball to collect 3,000 hits in a Major League career. He is now being congratulated by the American League President Lee McPhail, by the Executive Vice President and General Manager of the Detroit Tigers, Jim Campbell, and is surrounded by his parents. The box beyond the Tiger dugout, down behind first base. Dick Krasuski, coach of the Tigers at first base, immediately retrieved the baseball and the bat that Al had used, and it will be presented to the Hall of Fame at Cooperstown, New York. The bat and the ball, on which Al Kaline collected Major League hit number 3,000. Well, Ernie, it's quite a moment here at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. Kaline didn't keep him waiting very long tonight. He sure didn't. He hit that ball well. It was a slicing drive down to the right field corner. Now he went over and gave his mother and, uh, a kiss, his dad a handshake, getting congratulations from everybody. And now he's ready to resume action in that fabulous 22-year career of his. A handshake from Bill Powell as Al goes out to second base. And he has made it hit number 3,000 in his career. At the moment, Al Kaline is tied with Clemente for the A one-two count now on Leon Roberts. McNally works to the plate. Strike three call. Roberts looks for the call third strike, and that's all for Detroit in the fourth inning. They get the leadoff double by Al Kaline, and that's it. No runs. One hit, no errors. One man left after three and a half. It still Detroit. One. Baltimore, nothing. Oh, it's a very, very extraordinary, scrump delicious day. It's incredibly, edibly tantalizing. I mean, it's a perfect day. So let's all go hand in hand to the Dairy Queen in the scrump delicious land. It's hard to beat DQ Brazier food when you're really hungry. How about a big brazier, charboiled over an open flame, or a super brazier chili dog almost a foot long? And don't forget a heaping order of french fries or onion rings. Everything at the Dairy Queen Brazier store is scrump delicious. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, let's all go hand in hand to the Dairy Queen in the scrump delicious land. S-C-R. Now, before the Orioles bat against Fern Rule in the fourth, we'll pause for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. 
Mark Avery invites you to his open house weekdays from 1010 to noon on Radio 76 WJR Detroit, America's great radio station. Here's Tommy Davis to lead it off for Baltimore in the fourth inning. The DH for the Orioles was safe on an infield single, a ground ball that scooted along the ground and eventually handcuffed Aurelio Rodriguez in the first inning. He fouls one behind the plate back into the off the press deck. Tigers in front one to nothing. They got the run in the third inning on the two out walk to Brinkman and the double by Ron LaFleur. There's the pitch over the plate but low to Davis from one and one on Tommy. Davis hitting 282. 11 home runs, 78 RBIs. Outside for ball two. O'Byrne got his first major league start last Thursday at Fenway Park in Boston. And to check the Red Sox on just one run and two hits in seven innings of work. Outside for ball three on Davis. John Hiller came on to mop up the last two innings of that contest, won by the Tigers 3-1. to one. The 3-1 three pitch. Swung on a ground ball towards Sutherland. He's got the big hop over to Sanders and easy out. A one up and one away here in the Baltimore fourth inning. Here's Boo Powell who has been hitting it well of late. We've got a little recording up here. There's a big bad boog when he comes to the plate. 11 home runs, 43 RBIs for Boog. Powell's had 10 hits in his last 23 at bats. He cuts and misses. He was going for Silver Spring on that one. Grounded out the first, his first time up. Sanders playing him deep at first where he was the first time and uh, played a, made a fine play. There's a pitch low and outside. One and one now on Powell. Sutherland is a good two steps on the outfield grass, halfway between first and second. motion the one one pitch swung on and fouled uh, off the facing of the second deck a one and two on Boog Tigers really play Boog to pull Boog was talking with Ernie and I uh, before the ball game about how difficult it is to hit home runs in this his home park got to get him right down the line and the pitch is swung on a ground ball in the right field base hit up with it into Brinkman at second as Powell is on with a one-out single here in the fourth inning. An excited, noisy crowd here at Baltimore tonight. Don Baylor is the batter. He flied out to the floor his first time up. A one-out with Powell at first. The Tigers in front one to nothing. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Here's the set by Rule. He checks the runner at first. The pitch to the plate. Swung on a one hopper to Rodriguez. He goes to Sutherland for one. The relay to Sanders. Double play for the Tigers. And just like that, Baltimore is out of the fourth inning. In the fourth, no run. One hit, no errors. Nobody left on base after four innings. Detroit one, Baltimore nothing. If you're a real beer lover, to us, you're somebody special. You're the kind of person who enjoys beer, likes the taste of it and prefers beer to anything else when you've got a real thirst. And you've probably tried a lot of beers before settling on the one that suits your special kind of taste. Well, the people at the family-run straw brewery understand you. You're our kind of person. And we've been making your kind of beer for more than 120 years, making it the way that mellows and smooths the taste. So every straw's is easy glass after glass. It's a tradition the straw family has carried on since 1850. From one beer lover to another, the Straw Brewery Company, Detroit, Michigan.
final moment for the parents of Al Kaline here at Memorial Park tonight. Mr. and Mrs. Kaline, Nick and Naomi Kaline in attendance. Very proud of their son. He was quoted earlier today, Nick was, saying that it means almost as much to me as it does to him, referring to Al. He said, I'm just his proud father. Here's Dan Meyer to lead it off for the Tigers in the fifth inning. The Tigers in front, one to nothing. Dave McNally against the left-hand batting Meyer and a tie inside for ball one. McNally has struck out three, walked one. A rule for the Tigers has no walks, no strikeouts so far, but he's checked the Orioles on five hits without giving up a run. Meyer, Rodriguez, and Brinkman here in the fifth to face McNally. There's a fly ball lifted to center field. Blair should have no problem with it, waiting for it to come down. Paul puts it away. Out number one in the Tiger fifth inning. The batter will now be Aurelio Rodriguez. Aurelio hit one to Belanger on the ground his first time up. now into his motion. The pitch is in for a called strike. A breaking ball that time. He took something off it. Well, K-Line is tied with Roberto Clemente now as the number 11 men on the all-time hit list. Ground ball right back to McNally. Easy play for Dave over to Boog in plenty of time. Rodriguez is out, two out in the Tiger fifth inning, and it will bring up Ed Brinkman. Only 15 major leaguers have ever collected 400 home runs in their major league careers. Al has 399, so he has a shot at that. Now the pitch from McNally. It's a breaking ball inside to Brinkman. Eddie walked his first time up with two outs and then raced in from first on the double to right center by Ron LaFleur. That's the difference in the game right now. He cuts and misses. One and one on Brinkman. Strike called on Eddie. One and two on Brinkman with two outs. Nobody on here in the top of the fifth inning. rocks on the mound. Here's the pitch. Swung on a miss. He struck him out. Tigers go out one, two, three in the top of the fifth inning. We go to the bottom half with a score. Detroit one. Baltimore nothing. Attention please. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's the lucky number can be found. When someone just talks about personal service without actually delivering something that will benefit you, you can expect the same satisfaction a batter gets when he argues balls and strikes of the umpire. And that, you can be sure, results in a very little satisfaction. On the other hand, when your local Michigan independent insurance agent says you can depend on him for personal service, he backs it up with performance. He really goes to bat for you, should your plant or business be robbed. He handles all the forms and paperwork. He assumes a headache. And he makes sure you have the right kind of liability, fire, workman's compensation, and health coverage. And he selects insurance for you and leaves you time to devote to other important business matters. That's just a sample of what personal service means when your business insurance coverage is handled by Michigan Independent Insurance Agent who displays the big eye symbol. The mark of an agent who delivers personalized satisfaction with the protection you need for your car, home, or business. Just a reminder, the Tigers will have a special day for Al Kaline now on Sunday, September 29th. There will be appropriate ceremonies attended to his having achieved 3,000 hits and a commemorative gift from Tiger owner John E. Fetzer for the fans attending the ball game against the Red Sox. And next Sunday, there will be a colorful two-foot by three-foot souvenir poster marking Kaline's admission to the 3,000 hit club. Brooks Robinson leading off the fifth inning for Baltimore takes a called strike in from Vern Rule. The Orioles
Royals collected three hits in the first inning, could not score. Outside for ball one. Rule set them down in order in the second inning. They got a double from Paul Blair in the third and a single by Food Powell in the fourth. But a double play took him off the bases. Swing and a miss by Robinson. One and two on Brooks. Brooks is hitting 294. into the motion. The pitch to Brooks is popped foul, and this will be out of play. Reggie comes over, but it'll be in behind the Tiger dugout. Count remains. One ball, two strikes. The Orioles have been a hot club. Last year, they moved away from everybody with a 14-game winning streak. This year, they reeled off 10 straight wins, have won 20 of their last 26. There's a hard smash to shortstop Brinkman. He's got it over to first to Sanders, and Brooks Robinson is out. A one up, one away in the Baltimore fifth inning. That'll bring up Elrod Hendry. And Ellie popped out to Brinkman his first time up. Taken nine out of 13 this year from the Tigers. As Rule goes into the motion, ground ball to the right side. Sutherland to his left has a big hop. The throw to Sanders and Hendricks is out. Two up and two down here in the fifth. Again this evening, as he did with the Red Sox for the most part, Rule has had the batters pounding the ball into the ground, keeping that ball low. There's Mark Belanger, who grounded out to Brinkman his first time up. In his first start in those seven innings at Boston, Rule walked to and struck out to. There's a breaking ball on the outside corner to Belanger. Strike one on Mark. Rule winds. The pitch taken outside. One and one. Langer is hitting 220. He has five home runs, 34 RBIs. Ball two outside and low. Tomorrow, Mickey Lolich goes for the Tigers against Ross Grimsley of the Orioles. What an addition he was this year. Ball three outside, three and one on Belanger. ready the 3-1 pitch swung on a bouncer foul over the hands of Billy Hunter coaching at third full count now on Belanger with two out nobody on the Tigers in front one to nothing here in the last of the fifth inning Franklin walked with two out on the third and came home on LaFleur's double there's a ground ball to the left side past Rodriguez into left field that was in the hole as both Rodriguez and Brinkman stretched out neither could come up with it a two-out single by Belanger here in the fifth inning. Hit number six for the Birds. And the batter will be Rich Coggins, the top of the batting order now. One for two tonight for Rich. In case you joined us late, Al Kaline did indeed collect hit number 3,000 here tonight. Al led off the fourth inning with a two-base hit into the right field corner. the last of the fifth inning. Detroit in front one to nothing. Two out. Belanger at first. Coggins, the left-hand batter against the right-hander Rule. The set by Byrne. He delivers high and outside. Now Rule bends in. He's got the sign from Freehand. Looks at the runner. And throws over there, but Belanger gets back. Not much wind at all here tonight. It's a very crisp and a very cool night in Baltimore. Looking for temperatures in the low 40s tonight. The set, the pitch to the plate. Taken high and outside, 2-0 and now on Coggins. Coggins singled in the first inning. Grounded out to Southern in the third. Blair 
waiting on deck. 2-0 count on Coggin. The pitch to the plate, swung on. There's a looping drive in the center field, a base hit. Belanger is around second. He puts the brakes on, but LaFleur dropped the ball, picks it up, and Belanger had already committed himself. They're going back to second base. The crowd doesn't like it. Belanger made the turn and then put the brakes on, but he did not see LaFleur drop the ball. He overran us a little bit in center field. Belanger returning to second base. By that time, it was too late to retrace his steps and head for third. So men are at first and second now with two out in the fifth inning, and Paul Blair will be the batter. Paul is two for two against Rule. A couple of two-out singles here in the fifth inning, posing a threat for Baltimore. They've collected seven all told. Set by rule. The pitch. Curveball outside. Ball one. Luke Walker and Dave Lemanchik are loosening up on the Tiger bullpen. Blair has singled and doubled off rule. Both Coggins and Blair have each collected uh, two hits. The other hits by Davis. Powell and Belanger. Two on, two out. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning, Detroit in front, one to nothing. Here's the set by Rule. He looks back at second. Now comes to the plate, swung on and fouled back up this way. Well, the Red Sox beat the Yankees four to nothing in the opener of their doubleheader. Their lead, that is the Yankees' lead over Baltimore, cut to just a half game, pending the outcome of this game and the second game at Shea Stadium. Langer leading off second. Coggins has his lead at first. The 1 1 pitch to Blair. Swung on a fly ball to center field. Back goes LaFleur. He reaches up and drops the ball. And they looted it. Here comes one run in. Here comes another run in. The play, the throw will go to third, stopping at second is Blair. It looked like Ron had it. He had to go back and do his right. And the ball seemed to sink on him. He reached down. Couldn't come up with it. It got behind him. Two runs in. Baltimore leads the Tigers two to one. It will not be a double for Blair. An error has been charged on the Tigers center fielder Ron LaFleur. A two base error and a two run error as both Belanger and Coggins running on the hit by Blair came all the way in. A two-base error by Ron LaFleur, allowing Baltimore to take a two-to-one lead here in the fifth inning. Bill Freehan out of the mound to talk to Rule. That ball did some funny things to Ron out in center field. He was there, and then all of a sudden started reaching down for it. It seemed to die on him just at the last second. He was backhanding the ball, and he couldn't come up with it. Here's Bobby Gritch taking a pitch outside for ball one. So there are no RBIs for Blair. A couple of unearned runs for the Orioles, giving them this two to one lead. Strike called on Gritch, one and one. here with a man at second and two away. A 1-1 pitch to Gritch. He swings and fouls this one back in the seat. One ball and two strikes. Bobby's 0 for 2 against Rule tonight. Walker and Lemanchik still throwing in the Tiger bullpen. Two and two on Gritch. Well, Bob has had himself quite a season. He's hitting 263. His average has uh, gone down a little bit since last we saw these Orioles. He has 18 home runs, 79 RBI. The set. The pitch is swung on. There's a ground ball to Brinkman deep in the hole. The long throw to first. 
He got him. A slide by Gritch at first base. Didn't get him in. What a play by Eddie Brinkman. He took a base hit and a run away from the Orioles and from Bobby Gritch. The Landry, or rather Brinkman, deep in the hole. Backhanded it through to Sanders. Gritch slid into first base, but not in time. And that's all for the Orioles. However, they pick up two runs on two hits. One Tiger error, one man left on base at the end of five innings. It's Baltimore 2, Detroit 1. Okay, you guys, line up. Look alive now. What's this, coach? A new team? You bet. It's your team, the Metro Buick Dealers car buying team. A car buying team of my own? That's really neat. But why? When you see a Metro Buick dealer believes that buying a Buick should be as much of a pleasure as driving one. So he's put together this car buying team to make sure you get exactly the car you want. How thoughtful. But why do they have the letters H-E-C on their jersey? <laughs> well, that stands for helpful, efficient, and courteous. Your Metro Buick dealer thinks that he should be helpful by advising you on car operation and in helping you select the right equipment. But efficient in terms of not taking up too much of your time. As for courteous, well, you know, being friendly and cooperative to everybody. That's super. My own team. Give your Metro Buick dealer's car buying team a workout today. Nothing beats a Buick. See Miles Dietrich, Harold Dietrich Incorporated in Wayne, Bud Shelton, Shelton Buick in Rochester, and Marv Tamaroff, Tamaroff Buick Opal in Southfield. floor to lead it off for the Tigers in the sixth inning against Dave McNally who for the first time in the game is working with the lead Baltimore leading it two to one the pitch to the floor is cut on and miss strike one McNally has struck out four Tigers he's walked one the left hander is ready he pitches there's a drive hit deep toward left field down into the corner It'll be in for extra bases for LaFleur. Baylor up with the ball, and Ron steams into second with a stand-up double. LaFleur leads off the Tigers' sixth inning with his second two-base hit off McNally. That's only the third hit for the Tigers tonight. His double back in the third inning drove in Brinkman from first with the other with the Tiger run. Here's Gary Sutherland. Twice Gary has lined out to Gritch at second. side of the infield is playing up on Sutherland and Robinson is in uh, fairly close at third LaFleur at second nobody out and there's a pickoff attempt at second but he gets back safely Grit sneaking in behind LaFleur McNally whirled on a count but Ron got back K-line is on deck for the Tigers as Sutherland waits for the first pitch from McNally. Here it is. He swings and fouls it back into the seat. Now both these teams were idle yesterday. The Tigers flying in Sunday night from Milwaukee after posting that 6-5 win, gaining an even split on the season with the Brewers at nine games apiece. came home from successful uh, weekend. Now the pitch is taken uh, on the inside corner for a called strike. But McNally is ahead of Sutherland with a two strike count. McNally steps off the slab as he's about to work to the plate. Goes to the rosin bag again. Ross Grimsley, who has really saved Baltimore this year with 18 wins, will get the start tomorrow night against Mickey Lolich. The two-strike pitch to Sutherland. Outside, and that's exactly where Hendricks wanted it. And Baltimore catcher stepped well outside the plate, and McNally put it right in the glove. He's hoping that Sutherland would go for it, wasting a pitch it's one and two on Gary. by McNally. He looks at LaFleur and comes to the plate with it. Ground ball to the right side. A big hopper toward Powell. He has to wait for it, then shovels it, and not in time. That was a tough play. 
That ball hit in front of the plate, took one great big high hop out near the bag at first. Powell, however, was about three steps away. He got it on a little tiny short hop and could not get the ball out of the glove quickly enough. He had difficulty shoveling the ball to McNally, covering it first, and Sutherland beat it by an eyelash. It'll be an infield single for Gary, and Al Kaline steps up. One for two for Al, hit number 3,000. A two-base hit into the right field corner. Came in the fourth inning. The floor at third, Sutherland at first. The Tigers trail two to one here in the top of the sixth inning. McNally ready to work. Goes to first instead, and it is very close. But Sutherland is back. Joe Brinkman, first base umpire, right on top of the play. McNally comes halfway over to the bag before getting the ball back from Boog Powell, and he has some words for Joe Brinkman. He's still giving him some words. Gary got back by his fingernails that time, uh, hitting the dirt, reaching out. Called safe by Brinkman. Our time is called. Hendricks has gone out to talk to his pitcher. And there's some activity out on the Baltimore bullpen. Doyle Alexander is beginning to loosen up for the bird. Another tight Baltimore Detroit ball game. Two to one here in the top of the sixth inning. Runners at first and third. Nobody out for the Tigers. K line is waiting for the first pitch from McNally. Here it comes. Outside uh, corner. He calls strike. K line took it. Hendricks looking for a pitch outside, and he got it there. And uh, Larry McCoy came through with the right hand. Grounded out to the shortest first time. Doubled in the fourth inning. He has one strike on him. The pitch from McNally. Swung on base hit to center field. Hit number 3,001 for Al Kaline. The game is tied as Kaline drives in Ron LaFleur from third base. Sutherland stopping at second. A hard smash right up the middle. Another clean hit for Al Kaline. He is now number 11 on the all-time hit list in the major league. Moving one ahead of the late Roberto Clemente. And time is called as Earl Weaver, manager of the Orioles, comes out to the mound to have some words with McNally. He has Doyle Alexander, a right-hander, warming up in the bullpen, which is beyond the fence out in left center field. And he's talking to Hendricks, conferring with Brooks Robinson, having a few words with McNally, and he is not removing his pitcher here. He's heading back to the dugout. Bill Freehand is the next Tiger batter. K-Line is two for three here in front of his hometown fans. Well, his hometown really is, in essence, Detroit, having spent 22 years in Detroit. But his mother and dad present here, along with many ex-teammates that he used to play high school ball with and sandlot ball. He's on first, Sutherland at second. Nobody out. There's a bunt attempt. It's popped foul beyond the reach of Boog Powell down the first base line. Freehand trying to move him up. What a night for Al Kaline. Not one but two hits, and he has driven in the tying run. It's 2-2 two -two with two on. Nobody out on the top of the sixth inning. Strike count on freehand. McNally ready to work. He squares. There's a bunt. It's out in front of the plate. Fielded by McNally. One play. That's at first base. Rich covering. Freehand with a perfect sacrifice bunt. Moves the Tiger runners up to second and third. Now let's pause for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Dave Dials comments on sports every morning on Radio 76 WJR Detroit America's great radio station. Freehand did his job. He's gotten the two Tiger runners into scoring position now with one out. Reggie Sanders at the plate. 0 for 2 for Reggie. And the first pitch to him is a ball outside. There, 
going to intentionally pass Reggie. That's the case here as Hendricks with an unusual stance. Most catchers, when an intentional pass is going to be uh, taken, will stand outside. Reggie stands uh, behind, sideways, behind the plate, and then moves out to take the pitch. That's the third wide one. This will load up the bases with rookie Leon Roberts coming up. There's the fourth wide one, and Sanders gets the intentional walk. It's a 2-2 tie here in the top of the sixth inning. One out. The bases loaded with Tigers, and Leon Roberts coming to the plate. Leon flied to center his first time up, then took a call third strike in the fourth inning. The infields at double play depth. Dave McNally looks in the direction of Sullivan at third. Here's the pitch to Roberts. Low and inside, ball one. A young man from Portage Northern High School at the University of Michigan. In a tough spot now with the bases loaded one away. The game tied at two to two in the top of the sixth inning. The pitch to Roberts. He swings a bouncer to Belanger. They might get two. Does Gritz for one? The relay to first. Scooped up. Double play. Well, the strategy paid off for Baltimore. It was a ready-made double play ball. Belanger to Gritz to Powell. And that's all for Detroit in the sixth inning. But the Tigers come up with one run on three hits. There were no errors with two men left on base. After five and a half innings, it's now Detroit 2, Baltimore 2. Put yourself in the Stroh's place for a minute. How do you convince a beer lover who's never tried Stroh's beer that it might be the best he's ever tasted? You could tell him about 120 years of family tradition, but he's probably not going to rush out and buy a case. You could say that Stroh's is the only fire-brewed beer left in America, but he'll probably say, what's fire brewing? You might tell them fire brewing makes a smooth, mellow beer, but it's not the kind of taste you can put into words. I'll bet if you ran the Stroh Brewery, you'd just sit down with that beer lover face to face, pour him a glass of Stroh's, and say something like, my family brews this beer the way we like it, and we hope you like it too. Then he'll taste it. And at that point, you'd rest your case. The Stroh Brewery Company, Detroit, Michigan. going to be a factor in this Eastern Division race in the American League. What were these two games at Baltimore? The four coming up with Boston beginning on Thursday night at Tiger Stadium. And the three next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday against these Baltimore Orioles at Tiger Stadium. It'll be family night on Monday night. And then to wrap up the season, a pair of afternoon games on Tuesday and Wednesday with game time each day at 1.30. Here's Tommy Davis to lead it off for Baltimore in the sixth inning against Vern Rule in this 2-2 tie. The first pitch from Vern is in for a called strike on Tommy. Davis is one for two with an infield single and the bounce off to Sutherland. Now Tom steps out of the batter's box. Getting himself ready, looking out to the outfield. Pitch from Rule, it's a high breaking ball, one and one. The Orioles took a two to one lead in the fifth. With two out singles by Belanger and Coggins, they both came home when Ron LaFleur was charged with an error on the line drive fly ball by Paul Blair. There's a pop up down the right field line. It's in foul territory, chased by Reggie Sanders near the seats. He can't get it. It's back in about three rows. Well, Ian Sutherland over there banging into the tarp roll. One ball, two strikes on Tommy Davis. It was good to see Jim Northrup again uh, around the batting cage before the ball game tonight. Bernie said he hasn't seen enough of Baltimore to know much about the town other than his visits here as a Tiger. 
pitch from Rule is swung on and fouled back to the screen. The ground remains a ball and two strikes on Tommy Davis. Jim suffered a hamstring muscle pull not too long after he had uh, joined the Montreal Expos. He's hitting the ball very well when he had the muscle pull. There's a line smash to center field to base hit. Out over the mound and out of her second base, Tommy Davis leads off the Baltimore six with his second hit of the game. And for the Orioles, hit number eight. Here's Luke Powell. John Hiller is beginning to loosen up for the Tigers. In the second game of that doubleheader between the Red Sox and the Yankees, the Yankees have a one to nothing lead after one inning. They lost the opener to Boston four to nothing. Louis Tiot getting the win in that one. Luke Powell is one for two off rule. Davis at first with nobody out. Pitch to Boog is fouled back up into the upper deck. Boog has a hot stick for him of late with 11 hits in his last 24 trips to the plate. Sanders trying to keep Davis a little closer at first base. Not a big lead for Tommy. The pitch is bunted. A surprise. Fielded by Rodriguez. He barely got him. Good stretch by Sanders at first base. Powell caught the Tigers looking for something else. Byrne had trouble getting off the mound, and he couldn't get to it. Rodriguez had to really gun at the first. The sacrifice by Powell moves Davis down to second. Sacrifice bunt goes 5-3. Davis now second with one away. And Don Baylor at the plate. Don flies to center his first time up. Bounced into a double play his last trip. 0 for 2. But Baylor has also had a hot bat lately. Here's the pitch. It's swung on. There's a base hit to center field. Racing for third is Davis. He's being waved home. LaFleur drops the ball and has no play. Game the lead three to two here in the sixth inning on the run producing single by Don Baylor. The ball was charged by LaFleur in center field. He picked it up in short center field and then bobbled it, bobbled it again, and realizing then he had no chance to make a play at home plate held on to the ball. Billy Hunter, however, was ready to wave Davis in all the way and of pacing him down the line between third and home. It's 3-2 Baltimore, one out, Taylor at first, and Brooks Robinson to base burn rule. Brooks is 0 for 2 with a pair of ground outs. The runner goes, the pitch out, the throw to second, he is safe. The Tigers pitched out, but what a jump Baylor had. And that time he stole on the pitcher rule, no question. Here comes manager Ralph Houck out to the middle of the diamond with the Orioles in front three to two, a man in scoring position at second base. That's the 26th stolen base for Don Baylor this year. Houck still talking to Rule. Brinkman and Freehan also out of the mound. Now the Tigers earlier had Walker and Lemanchik loosening up. Now Hiller and Ray are throwing in the bullpen. And it appears we're going to have a pitching change. John Hiller has stopped throwing out there beyond the fence, picks up a warm-up jacket, and he'll be coming through the gate in the fence very shortly. The Tigers are going to their ace in the bullpen, John Hiller here with a man at second, one out, one run in. Baltimore in front by a score of three to two. And while Hiller trots in from the bullpen, we'll take the opportunity now to pause and listen to this message. 
If you're looking for a long-wearing, smooth-riding tire at an easy-going price, come to the other guys, your BF Goodrich retailer. They're having a sale on BFG's four-ply polyester cord white walls. Tough, dependable tires that really hold up under today's driving conditions. Now through the end of September, BFG's four-ply custom long miler starts at only $23 plus federal excise tax. Larger sizes are priced at only $27 and $31 depending on size. So hurry down to your nearby BF Goodrich retailer and save on Goodrich polyester cord white walls today. In Dearborn, see Bob Phillips at the BFG store at 15150 Michigan Avenue. And in Madison Heights, see Rick Wagner at BFG 28501 Dequinder. Na, 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 na. Who won't be at Goodrich? Na. takes over now. That means that uh, Rule, a pitch five and a third inning, gave up three runs. He leaves the man on the bases. He allowed nine hits. He didn't walk anybody and struck out anybody. He pitched a fairly strong game, but suffered for uh, poor support, especially on the drop fly ball in the uh, fifth inning when uh, the inning would have been over, except that uh, Ron Lafour dropped a fly to allow two runs to score. And at that point, put Baltimore in the lead. Then the Tigers came back with one in the sixth, and the Birds have picked up one here in the last half of the sixth inning. We've got a report from New York. The latest there is a one nothing. The Yankees lead the second game at the end of one. Moret against Gurham. Boston beat the Yanks in the first game four nothing. Milwaukee and uh, Cleveland. The Indians lead three to two in the fourth. Chicago, Texas rained out. California leading Kansas City four nothing in the first inning. Minnesota and Oakland. Uh, that game will start later on. Now back to Paul. Thank you, Ernie. And the reaction from the crowd here of boos is not for Boo Powell, but for the fact that they are going to intentionally pass Brooks Robinson as the first job that John Hiller does. This will be charged to John, of course. Well, it paid off for the Orioles on the top of this inning as they walked Reggie Sanders to load up the bases, and that resulted in a double play. Here in the sixth inning, the Orioles have collected a single by Davis. He moved to second on the sacrifice punt by Boog Powell and scored on Don Baylor's single to break the tie. They lead it three to two. Brooks Robinson issued the intentional walk. He's on first. Baylor is at second with one away. And Elrod Hendricks scheduled to bat, but Andy Etcheberen will be coming in to bat in place of Hendricks with the Tigers going to the left-hander Hiller. Baron hitting 216, two home runs, 13 RBIs. Hendricks, while he was in, was 0 for 2 with a pop out on the ground up. Brooks Robinson at first, Baylor at second, a one out. John Hiller in relief of the Tiger starter Burn Rule. John has won 17 and lost 11. He has 13 saves to his credit. 30 fireman points. One away from Elroy Faces. All-time Major League record of 18 victories by a relief pitcher in a single season. Hiller leans in. He has the sign from free hand. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike one. in Boston, Hiller came on to relieve Rule to start the eighth inning after Byrne had stopped the Red Sox on two hits over the first seven. In this case, Hiller is taking over with the Red with the Orioles in front, three to two. Now the set by John, the pitch to the plate. Etcheberry cuts and misses, strike two. Strike count on Etcheberry. The pitch from Hiller. Low and inside. It gets away from freehand, but Bill blocked it and kept it in front of him. Well, one and two now on Etcheberry. We've had some battles here this year again. This is the eighth meeting of the season between these clubs at Memorial Stadium. The Orioles have won four of them, and the Tigers have won three. At 
Tiger Stadium this year. The Orioles have taken five out of six. Tiger infield and double play depth. One two count on Echebaron as Hiller goes to the stretch. The pitch, the runners go. There's a fly ball lifted to left field. Coming in is Meyer. He's under it. Dan waits for it. Makes the catch, and the runners have to return. Taylor broke on the pitch for third. Robinson breaking from first. And they all had to come back. Two out now with Mark Belanger coming up. Well, Mark is one for two with a ground out and a single. noisy crowd here at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore tonight. The Orioles batting for the Eastern Division title. The set now by Hiller. Here's the pitch to Belanger. Low and outside. Ball one. The Orioles have three runs on nine hits. The Tigers two runs on five hits. Swing and a pop-up in foul territory. It may be out of play near the Orioles' dugout. Rodriguez over there, reaches in and makes the catch. About a step away from the first step in the dugout. Well, that's all for Baltimore as John Hillard comes in and shuts the door on the birds. In the sixth inning, they pick up the tie-breaking run. One run on two hits. No Tiger errors. There was a walk. Two men left on base. At the end of six, it's now Baltimore three, Detroit two. Your marathon dealer does more than just sell you gas. He's your good neighbor for service to your car and driving needs. He's also a good neighbor to the community he serves. Here's a community service tip your marathon dealer would like you to know about. The St. Scholastica Dads Club is having a fall festival September 27th through the 29th with carnival rides, games, prizes, and more right on the parish grounds at Southfield and West Outer Drive. St. Eugene's Catholic Church in the Northwest Detroit Southfield area will hold its annual Good Old Days Festival Sunday, September 29th at Edgewater Park. It begins at 1.30 p.m. And the Northville Historical Society invites the public to the 8th annual Northville Historic Home Tour on Thursday, September 26th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. These community service reminders are a service from your neighborhood marathon dealer. And marathon says, here's to our dealers. Bless them all. Baron, who batted for Ellie Hendricks in the, in the sixth inning, stays in the game to catch for Baltimore here in the seventh. And back for the play-by-play, -play, here's Ernie Harwell. Thank you, Paul. Here's Danny Meyer up, and he takes the ball. Oh, ball one. Paul, we want to congratulate you on that great call of K-Line's historic hit. Announcers have their big moments, too, and uh, that was splendid. That was one of the great thrills, Ernie. Thank you. Here's the wind-up now. The pitch is swung on and the pop foul over near the Tiger dugout. Echebaron and Powell after it, and Powell makes the catch. Good play by Boo Powell, who has looked very sharp at first base. Rodriguez will be the batter now against McNally. Aurelio has bounced to short and grounded out to the pitcher. Well, we had a nice uh, visit up here in the Memorial Stadium uh, press box with Miss Lori Leary, who is a great Tiger fan and uh, from uh, the Benton Harbor Journal. She's here to cover the K-Line historic hit. Here's the wind-up and the pitch to Aurelio. He swings and misses. The Lake Michigan Journal from Benton Harbor, Michigan. To the score, the Orioles in the lead. It's the seventh inning. The Tigers have one out and uh, nobody on. McNally's gone all the way. The Tigers had him on the rope last inning, but he survived with a double play. Strike called. He got a fastball over. McNally's the type of uh, pitcher who will get tougher in the late inning, especially with a one-run lead. Three runs, nine hits for the Orioles. Two runs, five hits for the Tigers. Outfield straight up on Aurelio. The wind-up, the pitch on the way. He swings as a tapper off his foot. Going down to Brooks Robinson, the uh, ball hits the foot of Rodriguez and bounded into fair territory. And if you've uh, missed the earlier part of the game, 
Al Kalin has picked up two hits here tonight. A double in the fourth was number 3,000. A single that drove home a run in the sixth inning was number 3,001. He's had two for three in his own hometown of Baltimore. First time up, he bounced to shortstop. Here's the pitch now by McNally to Aurelio Rodriguez. It's a wide one, a one ball and two strikes. The Tigers scored first in this game in the third inning. A two-out walk to Brinkman and a double by the floor. Then the Birds came back on a two-base error by LaFleur and picked up two in the fifth inning. There's a bounding ball foul outside of third. That's made the score two to one Baltimore. The Tigers then in the sixth tied the game with a double by LaFleur, a single by Sutherland, moved him to third, and Kaline sent him home with a single. And then the Birds scored in the sixth inning, the tiebreaker, single by Davis, sacrificed by Powell, and a single by Baylor. Here's the pitch. Rodriguez takes a half swing and fouls it away. McNally has walked a couple. And he struck out four. Double play for McNally was a big play in his favor there in the sixth inning. When the base is loaded, Roberts ended the inning bouncing into DP. Here's the pitch again to Rodriguez. Change up, swung on a bounding ball, hit through the legs of Brooks Robinson. He managed to get his glove on it, but couldn't hang on. And Rodriguez is safe at third. We'll wait for the score on that one. It was a hot shot. But Brooks got his glove on it, and then it uh, skidded through his leg. It will be a single for Aurelio. Some disagreement uh, from the paying customers here. And here's Eddie Brinkman. He's walked, scored a run, and uh, struck out. Three to two, the Orioles lead the Tigers, seventh inning. McNally lobs one over to Boo Powell at first, and Aurelio back in plenty of time. Don't forget, a big celebration coming up for Al Kaline on Sunday. The Tigers will be playing Boston that afternoon. There's a swing and a foul off the mid of Echebarren as Rodriguez was set on the pitch. Well, the fans and Al will all share in the glory of that 3,000th hit. There will be appropriate ceremonies and a gift from Tiger owner Johnny Fetzer for Mr. K-Line. And for the fans, there will be a colorful two-foot by three-foot souvenir poster marking K-Line's admission to the 3,000th hit club. Lots of uh, dignitaries and celebrities will be there to pay tribute to Al. We hope you'll uh, be among the crowd on this coming Sunday at Tiger Stadium. Here's the pitch coming up now to Brinkman from McNally. Nope, he's going to deal the first. And Rodriguez back in time. Bob Reynolds throwing in the Oriole bullpen at the moment. Now McNally holds it at the belt, but it is. And Brinkman swings. It's a foul fly to right. It'll be well back in the seat from the lower deck. Strike two, the count on steady Eddie. Well, the Tiger hit total is six. Two for the floor, two for Kaline, one for Sutherland, and one for Rodriguez. Three of the six hits have been doubled. The floor has two doubles and Kaline one. Well, the Orioles have a hit total of nine. Vern Rule started for the Tigers, and Hiller relieved him in the sixth inning. Well, the runs were all chargeable to the starting pitcher Rule. Now the strike two pitch again to Eddie Brinkman from McNally. He takes a high one, one and two, the count on Ed. is the first of a two-game series. Grimsley and Lolich will be the pitchers tomorrow. It'll be a battle of left-handers here at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. Waiting on a one-two serve. Here it is. He swings. There's a fly ball down in the left field corner. Fairly deep. Baylor going back at the wall, looking up, and it is gone. A home run for Brinkman. He got it right down the line at the 309-foot marker, and it drifted into the first couple of rows of seats. And the Tigers take the lead 4-3 to three on Eddie's 14th home run of the season. Oh, Brinkman uh, coming home following Rodriguez crossing the plate. And that home run will send a free case of superior potato chips to the Jewish Community Center of Metropolitan Detroit. Remember, superior potato chips give a natural home run case 
They are made with real U.S. number one potatoes. And a homer by Eddie Brinkman, sending the Tigers into the lead here in the seventh inning, four to three. Here's Ron LaFleur stepping in with uh, two hits to his credit. And he takes the McNally curve on the inside corner for a strike. Brinkman now has eclipsed his former high in RBIs. He has 51. He'd already uh, gone uh, to the top number of home runs he'd hit in any season. Here's a pitch that jams LaFleur to the shoulder, a fastball. He moves back one and one the count on Ron. The lower part of the batting order jumping on McNally. A single by Rodriguez and a home run by Brinkman. Tigers lead it four to three. LaFleur taps one slowly. Off the mound comes McNally. Throws to first. He is out at first base. And there'll be an argument about that one. Joe Brinkman called him out. LaFleur doesn't think so. Neither does Kuzuski. But he is out number two in the inning. And the next man to bat will be Sutherland. with a single and two line drives to second base. Four to three, the Tigers lead him. McNally winds and pitches, and uh, Gary takes a fastball in close, ball one. Wind up by the left-handed, the pitch is on the way, bounding ball deep, the shortstop off the glove of Belanger. He can't make a play, and Sutherland turns and holds it first. The ball picked up by the left fielder Baylor and thrown in on one hop to Gritch at second base. And uh, here comes Earl Weaver out. This will mean a change. They've had Bob Reynolds throwing in the bullpen. Al Kaline will be the next batter, and this will be all for McNally, as the Weaver has already signaled to the bullpen to bring in the right-hander Bob Reynolds. The Tigers now have the lead, uh, four to three, as McNally leaves the mound. And let's go over to Paul Carey. All right, Ernie. While the pitching change is being made here by Baltimore, and we await the appearance of Bob Reynolds from the bullpen, we're going to pause for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. What's going on in Detroit is on Radio 76, WJR Detroit, America's great radio station. Taking over here in the seventh inning, uh, in relief of the starter Dave McNally. McNally went six and two thirds innings, has allowed the four Tiger runs and eight hits. He walked to one of those intentionally. He struck out four, and of course is responsible for Gary Sutherland at first base. Al Kaline, the next batter up for the Tigers. Al two for three off the starter McNally. So in a position like this, following the two-run homer by Eddie Brinkman that gave the Tigers the lead, manager Earl Weaver is going to the bullpen and calling upon Bob Reynolds. Reynolds has won six and lost five this year. He has a total of six saves for Baltimore. This will be his 51st appearance of the season. He's been used by, uh, by Earl Weaver more than any other out on that Baltimore bullpen so far this year. Fine earned run average of 3.03 for Bob Reynolds. He's a right-hand pitcher. Coming on to face the right-hand hitting Al Kaline. Don't forget the special commemorative celebration on Sunday at Tiger Stadium when all those in attendance will receive the two-by-three-foot posters commemorating the 3,000th hit of Al Kaline. It was a double into the right field corner in the fourth inning here tonight. Then Al in his, his third time up in the ball game in the sixth inning singled home a Tiger run at that time. It tied the game at two to two. So Kaline has numbers 3,000 and 3,001.